There's so much crazy stuff in the Pokemon Giga League, and we just get more and more of it. We now have concept art for Mimikyu. Not the disguise, Mimikyu. That's crazy. Also, a flying type evolution was planned for Generation 7. Verlicify always right. Concept art with a pooping Pikachu in it, and then more details about the Alola region. Mimikyu's concept art. What does Mimikyu look like? There it is. I love Mimikyu. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. I don't like that. So good thing- I'm like- I'm like good. I- we- some things need to be scrapped. Some things need to be changed. Mimikyu deserves to be more than just an overly sad blob. And I'm not even like, oh, but it ruins the mystery and that's why I don't like it. No, like that's- that's not what you put under the disguise. Good job, Game Freak. And it's interesting because we can see the concept art, like, oh, some of the mystery, like, what, what is, where's Mimikyu? That's what it looks like without its disguise. And it was actually a part of the full concept art that had Mimikyu inside of it. Also, I don't know why, but I feel like I've seen that expression on a black blob before. Is there, like, some fan concept that got really close? Or is this in my brain for some reason? I don't know. That, that, that's kind of weird to me, but let's talk about flying type evolution where we have the notes about it That's all I want. I wish Game Freak had just a little bit more Transparency with like interviews or maybe even revealing scrapped Pokemon from time to time. They're so private That's like really upsetting and then getting the actual lore getting the actual intention It, it reignites my passion for Pokemon in this dead god-awful community and I wish it happened a bit more if there was more to like engage with Pokemon But it has really become too much of like a faceless design conglomerate and corporate entity at this point even worse with the pokemon company international but let's read the, read the notes because this is crazy the implications again it's gonna take months to unravel everything and then piece it all together and really like polish pokemon lore and trivia even more after being told that the design was too similar to a design created by a fan it was decided that the design cost would be very high there's a game where flying eevee is the main character or if it's a high value in the game then you can do it. Otherwise, it's not worth the high cost. We could make that decision. That's not the case at the moment. We'll put it on hold until we can determine the importance of the new Pokemon. Million things break down. So I'm wondering, like, I think cost is more like development cost, not monetary. Like, oh, it would cost this much to design this Pokemon and therefore we don't get it back. But it's also like the resources, the amount of research that would have to be done. And I remember seeing something a long time ago where people like, Please, stop sending your fan art to Game Freak because then they can't make that Pokemon, especially if it's an evolution or an alternate form. You're restricting what they can do. Like, stop making fan art of actual Pokemon or things you want to see because then they can't make it. And this further confirms that because I think it's impossible to get a new evolution without making an entirely new type because every evolution concept has been made. I'm willing to bet the Game Freak employee had never seen that piece of fan art of a flying type Eevee evolution made a design and someone from team got back to him and was like yeah we can't do this one because it looks like a, a fan art one which is so stupid oh, but there is like a clause I remember in like some Pokemon support ticket or some Q&A on the website that's like if you make fan art we can just use it and it's ours now so it's like I, I don't know why that's such a consideration and like there needs to be a way of Game Freak unwinding that so they can actually make better designs. Maybe that's why Generation 8 and Generation 9 designs are so crap because fans have taken like 90% of the good ones just from sheer volume. It's now impossible to make a full decks of cool new Pokemon so we have to get all of these abominations since there's no there's no freedom left for Game Freak. That has, like, do, are, do they really think they're going to lose praise? because someone's fan design looks similar. I think they've already fallen into that before. Like, it's impossible for Game Freak to know of every fake mon and every fan evolution and every fan form, yet that actually becomes a consideration in development. That's, that's so stupid. Like, that, that just upsets me in, in so many weird ways. It's like, yeah, is the fan actually going to sue them? Why? I'm like, do they compensate the fan? Like, if, if the design is so close, why don't they just buy out the fan? for a small amount of money with like an NDA or something. Because at that point they become like a soft concept artist at least and that would be cooler. So again, like Game Freak being too private and locked down, but then also the Pokemon Company International seems too, too open and too woke and weird when it comes to like how they engage with the community and stuff. I don't, it just, I think it's gotten too big. Yeah, the Pokemon Company has gotten like too big to, for everything to be managed. And then you also have weird things with like what's happened with Junichi Masuda kind of getting shuffled around Game Freak 
now we have multiple development studios making main series games and stuff. It's it's gotten too ugly. And somehow in that mix and in that concern, we're never allowed to get a new evolution ever again because of weird decisions. Like they they could just say no. But it's it's also weird that's like, oh, the amount of cost like and development resources it would take to research every like possible interpretation of that evolution to make sure a fan hasn't done it and then put in more to make a good design that fans will like that can't overlap with anything else like that that's just too much work and we're just not having it. it's so stupid but what about verlicify always right god damn the entire pokemon community does owe me an apology i got so much hate words like clickbait fake all of and you get mad at fake leaks when I base my information and speculation off of confirmed official sources or real information, then people get mad at me more for that than the people that are just lying and faking on 4chan and covering garbage 24-7 like A-Drive and Tyrantar Tube. It, it's so stupid. And yet, I was, I was close. I did it with Lycanroc. I predicted Dusk Lycanroc. That was like one of the greatest accomplishments. And then doing the similar things for the Eevee where it's like, yo, Eevee is a Pokemon of adaptation. What what if its friends are in trouble and has a broken leg and it adapts into a flying type? That would be like the sickest thing ever. Flying Eevee was on the table. I'm so upset. Also, by sheer coincidence, I put Flying Eevee in my potential evolution mechanic video. Uh, we have this where like we saw the decks for Pokemon Sun and Moon and then, yep, rip Eevee. And at one point I did 99.9% .9 new evolution because we have like all this stuff. Now, it was going into Pokemon let's go Pikachu and Eevee, and we couldn't possibly know that, but there were concepts, and it was, like, moved for potentially in the future, where they're like, hey, if we can figure this out, we'll put it on hold until we can determine the importance. Bro, why didn't they just give us, like, three new evolution typings and let's go? They could have. Also, depending on, like, movie development, there was definitely room for flying Eevee in the movie, and then, like, a new Pokemon just be added in. Is new evolution possible? Uh, just going off of the Eevee event, the Eevee Twitter, and all the other crazy stuff that was popping up. The merchandise leaks, which were really powerful. Man, like I said, like, this stuff brings me back to when Pokemon was popping. That was hype, because, like, seeing Mimikyu and the Korra Korra leaks and all the extra concept art and the lore behind it and Pokemon Sun and Moon giving us news all the time, it was such a good time to be a Pokemon fan. And I'm reliving that through the leaks, but now it's just god-awful now. Uh, concept art of our room. It's got Pikachu in it pooping on the toilet there's not a lot of like that in pokemon i was about to say like how often is that referenced in pokemon but it might actually be more than i thought because i think there are things where it's like oh this pokemon's droppings or it's waste does something in a pokedex entry and that was a part of like the typhlosion one where it's like girl just saw typhlosion poop everywhere and then a dude came out of the forest and she became his wife and he's a typhlosion at night okay now, this is also hilarious when we have the Pokemon Company International communicating with Game Freak about culturally appropriate and politically correct design. So, the original design for the Komoo armor, this doesn't fly because it's too gay. <laughs> the shorts are too tight and short, and shiny black leather is too gay. Makes him look like a stripper. Oh my, it, it, amazing. And then also, like, a uh, culturally relevant stuff. You would, you would never expect that to be a thing. To ever exist in some Pokemon development and discussion plan, but just the, the way the zigzags go, there's so much fear and scared and scariness of the alt right that looks too close to a Nazi symbol. Crazy. Uh, she just needed a little less skin showing arbitrarily. If Serena's color is too much like a skin tone that looks like a butt, and protagonist can't have a watermelon backpack. That's in that's internal memos. For Pokemon design. Now, not only was a gym feature scrapped in Pokemon X and Y, it was also scrapped in Pokemon Sun and Moon. And I wonder if those empty platforms in the concept art for Pokemon Sun and Moon were supposed to be gyms like I made my video predicting. Who, who even knows? So, after clearing the game, a Pokemon gym will be established. This is a collective term for a series of sub-events to scout suitable individuals to be gym leaders. So, like, you get to battle all the powerful trainers again. And they could be like, yo, join my gym. I like you. That's cool. Uh, the goal is to allow character fans to enjoy interactions with characters from Pokemon Sun and Moon, engage in Pokemon battles. While responding to character demand, the aim is also to incorporate flat battles to facilitate growth from casual to intermediate play. 
So uh, yeah, it just becomes level fifty. It's like the it's it's like its own battle facility in a way, which is kind of interesting. Players can obtain gym badges for customization. Dang, that would have been cool. Players will acquire Pokemon adjusted for battle, which cannot be obtained in the wild. So like, rental Pokemon? But here is where I think it becomes way too much. That this is after you beat the game, so like post game, with the construction of the Pokemon League, now eight gyms will be established across the Alola region. Bro, that's 100% on the concept art. In a recent video, I reopened the discussion about the empty plots of land that we see in each of the big cities on all the islands in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Now, a lot of the comments came back and said they're probably gym spaces that we gain access to at some point in the game, since gyms have not been present at any point of Pokemon Sun and Moon so far. Oh, for Listen by Always Right, times two. As champion of the Alola region, players will be asked to appoint eight gym leaders. Request comes from Pokemon Professor, and then its unique process for Alola, nomination succession or hinted at during sub event so actually we get gym leader lore finding out how gym leaders are normally appointed and then we have a new one for scouting since gyms need to be magically made in the alola region since we just had trial captains and stuff and then like there's flat oh and i think oh that's what they mean by the flat battling that instead of like yeah now you just bring a level 80 pokemon to beat up on level 70s in the post game it's all rounded down to 50 for all these battles so kind of like its own battle facility I don't know if that replaces it, and I'd imagine, like, then battle points in this. It could have been really cool, but it also could have easily been too much. Then we got more details about Pokemon Sun and Moon. So, yeah, this just takes me back to when Pokemon was popping. Supposed to have fossil Pokemon, version exclusives, rock water, rock, who knows, no evolutions. Mimikyu was going to have two version exclusive forms dressing as two other Pokemon. Doesn't mention which ones. No! That would have been so cool! Like, actual Mimikyu forms with different disguises! Why? Why, Game Freak? And then all Generation 7 Pokémon were decided pretty early on, and we just have the numbers and stuff like that. And they're, yeah, interesting. And scrapped Alolan forms, Electric Rock Rhyhorn, so instead we got, like, the Geodude line, and then Water Fairy Dugong. Interesting. Because, like, going from pre- Like, Pre-Marina needs to be pretty exclusive, so I don't think you can overlap that. Unless they, like, didn't have that design down on the water starter for Poplio. So, like, oh, Dugong, and then that just became Poplio. Uh, Bug Fairy Scyther sounds cool, and a Fighting Snorlax sounds really cool. So, yeah, there we go. Pokemon leaks are crazy, and... I wish I would just wish, like, we had, like, official insight into this every once in a while, so that... Game Freak could show more connectivity to the player base, and then everything could be hype, and we all love Pokemon. But no, it's all fake leaks and, and garbage and stuff, and no one likes, and everyone is toxic, and everyone likes cheating, and it's stupid. So yeah, there we go. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.